Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, es ist mir eine ganz große Ehre, hier an der Hochschule für Musik und Tanz Köln bei Ihnen zu sein. Und ich möchte der Hochschule und insbesondere Professor Heinz Goyen und Professor Arnold Jakobshagen dafür danken, dass Sie mich eingeladen haben. Obwohl ich nicht behaupten kann, dass ich kein Deutsch spreche, kann ich jedoch bestätigen, dass die deutsche Sprache nicht meine Muttersprache ist. Das haben Sie schon gehört. Ich habe ernsthaft, wirklich ernsthaft darüber nachgedacht, diese Lesung auf Deutsch zu halten, da Englisch die Sprache ist, deren Fachjargon ich zu diesem Thema besser kenne, habe ich mich jedoch schließlich entscheiden müssen, diese Vortrag auf Englisch zu halten. Ich hoffe, Sie verstehen das und ich danke für Ihr Verständnis. Und selbstverständlich, wie schon gesagt, werden wir während der anschließenden Diskussion sowohl Englisch als auch Deutsch, Niederländisch, Französisch, Flämisch <lacht> sprechen können. So, some keywords. It's not my intention to give a lecture. It's my intention to give a talk. And feel free just to interrupt me. It's, it's, it's a strange situation that I'm staying here and you are there and it's a kind of wisdom should fl flow in that direction. No way. But I'm happy to give some some open questions during this talk. Questions that I have no answers for myself, not yet. But maybe we together, we might come to some suggestions. But I give you in the beginning of this talk some keywords that I will, during my lecture, do my, not a lecture, during my talk, during my, the development of my thoughts, you will recognize. Artistic research, of course, is one. Artistic development is another, very, very important for me, and different from artistic research, artistic development. Another one is criteria to evaluate, to value, to judge artistic research. There is also the concept of societal responsibility. And finally, relevance, the relevance of what we are doing in research. We have now been acquainted with and accustomed to the phenomenon of research in higher music education in Europe, inside our conservatoires, intramuros, for a couple of years. For some even far more than a decade or even two decades. I'm speaking about situation in Europe. <coughs> it was, and it still is, a period of discovery of adaptation, of progression, of trial and error, period of recognition, of acceptance, of amazement, but also of confusion, of disbelief, sometimes disorientation, and even bewilderment for some. Indeed, the world has come the world has come to recognize that artists also work with modes of knowledge that can be explored, modes of knowledge that can be advanced, and that this exploration itself is an expert practice. Artist researchers have made the point that all that holds true for research in the established disciplines is also valid for research in and through the arts. As different, as different as the research results might appear to be, the epistemological drive, the processes and the empirical rigor with which research projects in the arts are undertaken remain the same. And this recent field of inquiry has entered in dialogue with longer established research disciplines. 
And I know there is no universally accepted definition of artistic research, and we are happily so. But there is some consensus that it describes this, this field of inquiry as a particular mode of artistic practice and of knowledge production in which scholarly research and artistic activity become, in a way, inextricably intertwined. So questioning the boundaries between art and academia and philosophy and science and artistic research enables the exploration and the generation of new modes of thought, new mo modes of sensible experience. We try to situate artistic practices beyond conventional disciplinary boundaries. We try to make the case for the establishment of a vibrant relation to contemporary philosophical and epistemological debates. And this implies a widening of horizons that is indebted primarily to artistic research. It is an alternative mode of making art and producing knowledge that has gained significant relevance in the last two decades. And at the same moment, we understand that artistic research is not a subdiscipline of musicology or art history or philosophy. It is a specific field of activity where practitioners actively engage with and participate in discursive formations emanating from the concrete artistic daily practice. It is at this, mo this moment that I would have showed video material. The thing is, I lost my, my USB stick in, in the train to Cologne. It's, it's a real pity, yeah. It gives us more opportunity to talk afterwards. <laughs> it, and there is a lot of material on the website of Orpheus Institute, but still, this would have been material that, that it's not yet on, on our <clears throat> website, but we can talk about it later. And I, I will say some words about a MOOC that we plan, and you will see also material there. But I feel very sorry for you and for me as well, actually. <laughs> Nevertheless, I quote Paolo de Aziz, one of our researchers, in his book Logic of Experimentation. I quote, fundamentally lateral to traditional disciplinary boundaries, artistic research enhances multiple ontologies, developing different epistemologies and creating varied modes of presentation. It does not necessarily present objects of conclusive knowledge, but rather insists of unfinished thinking on a permanent fluidity between thoughts and practices, triggering sensible processes as an interplay between conceptual and artistic thinking, between abstract thought and physical engagement with things materialities and institutions. Conclusive knowledge and unfinished thinking. End of quote. <clears throat> Artistic research is the result of the, of the most concrete work with the basic materials we every day have in our hands. Scores, editions, instruments, and of a substantial series of debates, rehearsals, performances, recordings, and writings. One of the main beliefs behind this whole endeavor of artistic research is our trust, our trust, our hope that we might clarify the gap between artistic experience and it's possible elucidation, revelation, if you want, revelation of new knowledge, of new understanding. And in order to do that, the processes of artistic research in musical practice would provide us new ways. 
this belief of clarifying the gap between our artistic experience as an artist daily and its possible elucidation as new understanding, that is taken as the starting point for the question that serves as the title of this talk. How artistic is artistic research? It depends on the, on the researcher. Does it? It depends on the topic, on the, in, on the in investigation. Does it? It depends on the level of artistry into play. Does it? How artistic is artistic research? It is a question that in itself could be questioned. You might come up with alternatives, for the better of the worse. How artistic should artistic research be? Or can research be artistic? Or what is the level of artistry needed to conduct artistic research? In this short reflection, I will not dare to even suggest that there is a clear and unblemished answer to these multifaceted and complex questions. What is, however, unquestionable is that this topic of what I would like to call the interrelationship between artistic research and artistic development is a crucial one, one that we have to take very seriously. He would have come my second video. <laughs> I would like to share with you some considerations that hopefully will lead to some exchange of ideas afterwards. As a working definition, I would describe artistic research in music, and some of you know that, as research that unravels the processes of music making. Research that unravels the processes of music making. You need to be an artist to do that. And you need to be a very good artist to do that. And we might claim that artistic research has a developmental role to play within the practice of art, rather than an explanatory. For me, that is a very important difference. There, to play a developmental role, more a developmental role than an explanatory role. And here I have, a, I have a, a side remark or a parenthesis on that developmental role. Why are we giving so much attention to the questioning of our own practices? Why is this questioning so important? Because it is a fundamental process. It co-constructs. It lays the foundations of an artistic trajectory itself. It is a conditio sine qua non for an artistic development, be it in an individual or in a common artistic trajectory. Artistic development without questioning, without critical engagement, is not possible. So I play with, not with words, but concepts of developmental work, critical thinking, where is the place of research and how we judge this work. This research attitude has the purpose of better understanding and thereby developing the art of music making. Actually, our final goal is not merely making music. Our final goal is not merely understanding music. Our goal is to develop the art of music making. Artistic research, we like to say, is research where the artist makes the difference in this development. And I would even go further. Artistic research, research should be seen as a crucial practice far beyond the artistic research community and the art, art world only. It is a crucial practice for the whole society. And in that respect, I quote the 2015 Springer publication, Arts, Research, Innovation and Society. I quote, Artistic research and innovations play an important role in defining new forms of knowledge and knowledge production. Artistic research 
and innovations have been major transformers as well as disruptors of the ways in which societies, economies and political systems perform. Creativity in general and the arts in particular are increasingly recognized as drivers of cultural, economic, political, social and scientific innovation and development. End of quote. This has profound consequences for the practice and understanding of music, and especially for higher music education. The introduction of best practices is often considered to be a challenge one should go for, as an artist, as a researcher, as an artist researcher. Best practices. Not only in our discipline, we hear it everywhere. What is the best practice for this? We look for the best practice. Blah, blah, blah. But artist researchers, critically questioning their practices, do not aim at developing a best practice. But thinking ahead are aiming at next practices. Best practices do not equal innovation. Next practices do. It's therefore our responsibility to act as a facilitator, I mean institutionally as well, to support the most creative and imaginative artist researchers who act as guides on the road towards these next, next practices. And that is a strong link with my idea of the developmental role of artistic research. This is the end of my parenthesis about <coughs> the developmental responsibility. We could wonder, we could wonder where artistic developmental work takes place in our society. Because I'm stressing this de developmental work, but where do, we, where do we look for it? Let's limit ourselves at this moment to music. Where do we think we see artistic developmental work in place? Do we think that new developments, say, in performance practices, are actively fostered by concert halls? Would concert programmers feel the need to contribute to this kind of development when planning the new stars for the next season? Would we expect this from recording labels when they are in the process of discussing and deciding what they will include in their portfolio and what not? Do we think that artistic development work is, serious, is a serious concern of festival organizers? <coughs> or even more problematic, do we think of organizers of concours, contests? And now, particularly, delicate, do we think that conservatoires are the ideal place to be at the forefront of the developments in the arts? Is it there that it all happens? Do we have to reconquer, regain this terrain? Meanwhile, you have understood that I believe there is a link between artistic research and artistic development. But how do we then see this relationship? In the context of our work in higher music education, and more specifically in our daily work with doctoral students, with artistic research projects conducted by teaching staff, and also with research projects by students at master level, what do we really expect from the body of research we are generating? What are our ambitions in that sense? How do we foster the de developmental role of artistic research? What could or should be the envisioned effect on our discipline in the long run? Because we are creating something and we do not fully grasp what exactly it is and what the effects are. We talk about it because we have to defend ourselves and we have to delineate our field of, 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 of work. But the basic questions sometimes we forget to, to, to phrase. 
Would we like to see the artistic identity of our institutions being changed by or through the effects of artistic research? And how new is that new understanding we gain through research? And to what an extent are we able to translate this new understanding into new practices? And for me, that is absolutely core question. I, I repeat, are, how, to what an extent are we able to translate this new understanding into new practices? Say we would answer, we are not able, then we should forget it. We should immediately stop. <clears throat> and that brings also the concept of relevance into play. Does this translation of new understanding into new practices also happen in our, in our higher music education institutions? Are we creating the right conditions for a humus layer on which research practice could thrive? We produce research, but do we use research? We produce, but do we use it? And how do we use it? Here comes the next side remark. I understand that institutional motivations to organize artistic research are varied. There is no single reason that institutions bring artistic research into their portfolio of activities. <clears throat> and as with many things in life, there are good reasons and not so good reasons. And often decisions may involve a mixture of these. Institutions are, at times, be driven by financial considerations, by concerns for reputation or even competition. And it is a fine thing that artistic research has become part of the larger European and international research language. But within our music institutions, this should not turn into some kind of heavy load or required outcomes. Rather, artistic research should evolve as a part of a larger development of musical knowledge and, above all, of musical practice. It should be part of a long-term vision on the future of our discipline and should be strongly connected to artistic development in and through our conservatoires. It should probably become available in more high-level specialized ways for those who are curious and want to evolve their work in that direction. And in that respect, I'm, I am inclined to think that artistic research should be available to all, but not required of all. That was a side remark. I come back to the idea that artistic research may, may be inextricably linked to artistic development. If that is the case, what is then the weight we assign to this criterion? I mean development. What is the weight we assign to this criterion when evaluating artistic research? For example, in cases like an application for a doctoral program, or in the case of a doctoral defense, or a decision about allocating funds to an artistic research project, do we take into consideration when we are looking, listening, judging an artist researcher and his or her work, what is the relevance for this research in terms of artistic development? <coughs> we probably share the same experience when evaluating doctoral applications or research projects or funding applications. And at the risk to make a too simplistic picture, we meet on the one hand artists pushing the borders of artistic knowledge, but not framing it in a research context. And on the other hand, artists being able to produce correct research through their practice, however, without considerable relevance or impact on the artistic development of their discipline. 
Here is an example of the first. <clears throat> a famous professor from a famous university in the UK said to me recently that Harrison Berthwistle, the composer, for his pushing the borders of compositional knowledge, would receive a PhD on the basis solely of his compositions. We, we would say that pushing the borders of compositional knowledge makes him a great artist. Pushing these borders is exactly what we expect from really great artists. In other words, we would qualify this as artistic development. I will today not further elaborate on the question what then would be the conditions for such an artistic development to be situated in a research framework. <clears throat> but in the context of this talk, I am more concerned about the place we assign to artistic research when reflecting about future developments in our own artistic practices. In other words, and from another perspective, what are the claims an artistic research ought to make? Here you would have enjoyed the third example. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Dear friends, we assign a place, an important place to artistic research by the way we evaluate that research. Producing research is one thing, evaluating, judging is another, as important. It tells something, if you listen to the criteria of an institution, it tells you something about the philosophy and about the level, about the way they look to, um, to quality. <clears throat> and as the reasons to organize artistic research may be manifold, as I said earlier, so may also the criteria to evaluate the outcomes of artistic trajectories, be it master level, PhD level, whatever. They be, might be very diverse. And this undoubtedly is influenced by the different perspectives we take. Institutional ones, individual, doctor, student, artist in the field, etc. Evaluating the artistic output in the framework of an artistic research project is not a small matter. It is something we struggle in Office Institute enormously. I repeat, to evaluate the artistic output in the context of an artistic research project. We evaluate artistic output daily. In every exam, in every, we have artistic outputs and we are able to do that. And if you question members of the jury, they will come to amazingly make the same results very often. From the moment we talk about artistic output in the context of an re artistic research project, all of a sudden we lose ways of judging it. Is it a contribution to knowledge and understanding? Is it a contribution to the artistic field? Is it both? How do they relate? We mostly fail to entirely grasp the full working of the artistic research output. <clears throat> I mean the grasping, grasping the effects in the artistic field generated by the research output. That working in the artistic field is so often much bigger and deeper, more drastic, that one can understand by merely relating to the knowledge and the methods applied in the research trajectory. That is what I struggle with. The working in the artistic field is often so much bigger, deeper, more drastic, then one can, can understand merely by judging, by relating to the knowledge and the methods applied in the research trajectory. On the website of a major European conservatoire, I read the following. <clears throat> Artistic research seeks to form a bridge between art 
and standard scholarly research. I think I, I fully disagree. When a researcher in the traditional disciplines conducts research, he or she engages in his discipline. It is about the two sides of the same coin. But this might be slightly different for an artist whose discipline it is to create, to make music. When an artist conducts research, be it artistic research or whatever, he does not necessarily seem to engage in that same way in his discipline, which is making music. There exactly lies one of the biggest challenges I see for artistic research. When a scientist does his science, he conducts research. When a scientist does research, he engages in his discipline. When an artist conducts research, he does not necessarily engage in the same way in his discipline, which is making music. I found a nice text on the website of the The Hague Conservatoire. I quote, art is brought into existence through an alternating process of making and reflecting. A zooming in and out of the material at hand, whether physical or conceptual. A shuttling back and forward between the known and the unknown. Other creative processes share something with art making when they try to bring something new to light, like architectural design or writing. But while a building must be known inside out to be able to exist, and words are set in black and white, artwork never quite loses its connection to the unknown. Art often holds some kind of knowledge that is below the radar of our conscious thought. Its vagueness allows it to keep open different possibilities simultaneously. It often knows things that the, artist, that the artist doesn't fully know him or herself, even though they made it. <coughs> End of quote. We accept that an artistic practice does not fully equal a research practice. The shift from an artistic practice to a research practice has some implications. This is my fourth video. Artistic research demands high levels of proficiency in both the intellectual and the practical realms that are relevant to the specific research areas explored. The challenge to produce research outcomes that can bear critical scientific and artistic scrutiny is indeed considerable. It requires the development of tools to inform critically the processes of practitioners, as well as opening new questions within the established scientific realms of, let's say, more traditional research disciplines. And indeed, as I said earlier, our recent field of inquiry acts on a cross-disciplinary terrain, which cuts across and between boundaries of the conventional categories of performance, composition, historical and critical musicology, performance studies, musical analysis, reception theories, aesthetics, and much else. But still the question is there, how do we, in a later stage, assess the artistic relevance of that artistic research for the practice back again? Or in other words, are we supporting art artist researchers producing insights and research that is of no relevance for what we are doing? Imagine this would be the case.
And I dare to say in some disciplines that happens, in some universities that happens, and some doctoral students are doing such kind of, of, of research. The question is, should we do it as well? And this relates to seeing artistic practice not only as the source domain, but also as the primordial target domain of our research. And this is not always self-evident. By source domain, I mean, if we talk about art artistic researchers, then we have to select, say, projects. <coughs> We in Office Institute, the first question we, we raise when we have an interview with a doctor student was say, can you explain us why you need to, to be an artist to do what you want to do? <coughs> That's a very open, very obvious question. But it goes, if, that, if, if there is an answer to that question, you have answered the question, are you doing artistic research? You can have a fantastic research question, but if you don't need to be an artist to address it, fine, do it, but maybe not in the context of a Hochschule or an office institute. If you need to be an artist, and you can explain this, then it's clear that the source domain of your, of your endeavor is your practice, is your being an artist. And then you start. The question that I raise here is, this, is the target domain that same domain as well? And as I said, that is not a self-evident endeavor. You can easily take off in your own domain and then, after some wandering and peregrination, land in a place where other disciplines are prevailing, like we often see in our, happening in our doctors, with our doctor students, music psychology, music philosophy, musicology. And strictly spoken, there is nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> Meanwhile, we all have seen many examples of research conducted by musicians being inspired by the research culture and research knowledge from other disciplines. But also the other way around. Artists, researchers being able to infuse and to provoke and to inspire our neighboring disciplines with the artists' insights and expertise. But again, how do we assess this artistic relevance of that research for the practice back again? What are our criteria? And my underlying, or not so underlying, a very obvious concern is the following. When in the activity of evaluating the quality of artistic research, we limit ourselves to the criteria to judge research as research, be it artistic research, to what an extent are we then floating away from the full potential and responsibility of artistic research to stimulate and empower artistic development? Say, we look to an accomplished research project and we would evaluate this in terms of research. To what an extent are we forgetting the developmental effect, artistic development, it could or should have on our daily practice? Or to put it very bluntly, shouldn't we look for criteria and have no answer? Not immediately an answer to that, but can we formulate criteria where we go beyond judging the research as research, which is also necessary, but if we claim it is artistic research and it is relevant for our practice, then we have to look for other criteria as well. And they are not the same as the criteria that we look for when we have, let's say, a master exam looking for the pianist performing on stage. That is something else. It, it has family resemblances, but it is not the same. And I am afraid 
that I have to admit that the criteria for admission to our own doctoral program at Office Institute may not always fully withstand this test. I'm happy to, to, to give the 12 criteria that we use. Don't write. <laughs> I think you can find them on the internet as well. <clears throat> and it tells something about the way we look to it. And, 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 and not always 100% proud of it in the sense that maybe we, would, we should work on, on, on another set. The first is the f a clear, carefully defined, adequate, adequately elaborated research question. Okay. Yeah. The second is, it should be practice-based research. Yeah, we said, can you explain why you need to be an artist to do what you want to do? A third is a well-founded research approach. You might translate it into kind of what the research culture of the person. The fourth is an original and significant contribution to musical practice, knowledge and understanding. That's traditional. The fifth, access accessibility and suitability of the sources. Yes, it seems obvious, but it is not always. <clears throat> Six, appropriate use of and connection to existing knowledge and theories. Yes, traditional. Seven, consistency of the research planning and appropriate time scale. Yep. Artistic and academic background of the applicant. Yeah. The level of the artistic performance and achievements in the submitted work. They are with, I would already start discussing this inside our institution. I would ask for connection to the research project. 10. Evidence of academic expertise and competence of the applicant in the submitted work. Yeah. 11 is a funny one, proof of enthusiasm and necessity to conduct the research. I'm very proud of that. Some people defend their project and you would say, hey guy, just wake up. Are you proud of it? Do you feel there is a kind of necessity? You have to be, you have to have passion. You can't put passion as a criteria. Do you have passion? Yes, I have passion, yeah. yeah. No. And the 12 is sufficient and appropriate command of, of English, uh, English language, that, that, that's clear. So you see, it's a public, public admittance that we also have to work on the search for the, combina uh, say, the interrelationship between artistic research and artistic developmental work, not only afterwards to judge, but in the beginning to support people. After all, an admission process is not to say no, but it's to say yes. We want to say yes. And indeed, we fully realize that artistic research on a doctor level, in first instance, envisions a research qualification. It's not the end of the world, it's just a qualification. You can do research, go further, and then it starts. There is nothing wrong with that qualification, and it is probably unrealistic to expect from all doctoral research a major contribution to an in-depth development of the own discipline. <sighs> no. But what is really worrying sometimes, for me, is the fact that the majority of today's artistic research is conducted at doctoral level, leaving the post-doctoral level completely out of the picture. No funding, no priority, no time, we could qualify this situation as rather dramatic. Because an artist needs time to grow, as a researcher needs time to grow. And getting a research qualification, like a doctoral degree, is a first step of what should be a long trajectory. For artistic research to survive and to put that stamp on the artistic development in the, in the discipline, we urgently, urgently need to cultivate and to support 
these long trajectories. Trajectories in which making a good discursive argument in research context is not a sinecure. Making a good discursive argument is not easy. But making suitable use of artistic material to strengthen an argument, that is already something else. The question is, can you require this at <coughs> doctoral level? You, you would like to, to see that happen, but let's be realistic. We're talking about people learning to how to conduct research. Developing an appropriate language of critique and feedback is essential to making progress in promoting artistic research. The doing and the making processes of the artist must progress hand in hand with the development of a new language. And in this context, I'm happy to announce that there is a new European project, a uh, kind of um, strategic partnership uh, network of which Office Institute is a member, and we are starting now um, under the title Advising, uh, so Advancing Supervision at Doctoral Level to search, to, to develop supervision at doctoral level. And the thing that Office will focus on is feedback. Give, how do you give feedback to artistic material in a context of doctoral work. A big step further is the situation where the artist researcher not only brings in and makes use of artistic material to make an argument, but where the artistic material itself makes the argument. For me that would be the, really the ideal case. I cannot imagine yet about something that would even come near to that, but that would be fantastic. For artistic research to survive, we should, let try, we should try to let the artistic material speak for itself. <clears throat> we need to give space to artistic material to make an argument. And that, in turn, underlies, underlines artistic research developmental role to play within the practice of art. And that I refer to at the beginning of my talk. To reach that level, that level of being able to work with material and to give space to that material to make the argument or to make it clear, an artist researcher needs extensive and extended experience and consequently time, hence the need for postdoctoral research. <coughs> if we let artistic material make the argument, it becomes again clear how artistic development should be seen as a major goal of artistic research and all that it entails in terms of organization, evaluation and funding. Parallel to the growing of our field of research, the criteria to value and to judge the artistic outcome of our research projects <coughs> And in other words, the relevance for our discipline should be developed and fine-tuned. I have a coda. Music itself is unthinkable without time. It is development of time. And it develops time. Maybe this is how we might think about our own processes of maturing a research culture through time. In the light of eternity, we should not complain about time left. Meine Damen und Herren, dies war einige persönliche Überlegungen zum Bereich der künstlerischen Forschung. Und ich hoffe, dass ich meine Besorgnis darüber zum Ausdruck gebracht habe, dass im Konzept der künstlerischen Forschung das Wort künstlerisch nicht auf ein Epitheton Ornans reduziert werden sollte, sondern als ein Epitheton Necessarium angesehen werden sollte. Vielen Dank. <lacht>